Ah, yes, Steven Seagal, renaissance man of sorts. I've never seen a man so actively disliked in so many different communities, whether it be acting, the political sphere, or in martial arts. Steven Seagal is kind of a running joke in martial arts. And by running joke, I mean when he runs, it's f***ing hilarious, dude. <laughs> I've never seen a man use so much f***ing elbow activity while running. It's insane. You'd think if you were going to have recorded history of you running, you would maybe just fucking take some running lessons or something, dude. You got to figure that out. It is a mess. For those of you wondering what Steven Seagal's been up to lately, it gets kind of fucking weird. I guess him and Putin are like homies. In Russia, Seagal reportedly met Putin at an after party and the two became fast friends. Putin even gave Stephen a Russian passport in 2016. This whole thing is being like, I'm a goddamn patriot. I'm pretty much special forces. I trained the CIA. I'm basically SEAL Team 6, honestly. But also, Vladimir Putin rules. <laughs> Wait, what? I also like to protect my country, and I do that on the border as best I can. I love Vladimir Putin, and I think he's a wonderful human being, a great world leader, a real man, and I love what he's done for the martial arts. The way he, like, looked up there is, like, is Putin standing right there? Is he, like, in the room with, like, a gun? Russia sent Steven Seagal to occupied Ukraine to spread propaganda as part of his role as Kremlin spokesman. So... His life has really spiraled in a very strange direction. I guess somewhere in Russia, some sort of high up dude just watched On Deadly Ground or some other Steven Seagal movie and went, damn, is this a documentary? Whoa, look at him go. He never gets hit. Holy shit, we need this guy on our side. Look at him fucking go. <laughs> I mean, that's Steven Seagal back in the day. He used to be built like a goddamn praying mantis. Just a tall, lanky bastard, hey? What happened? Look at him now. He's built like fucking Kung Fu Panda. It's insane. What's wrong with you, man? You're slipping. But you can't check your six. Obviously, a massive action star in the 80s and the 90s. He came out of nowhere. He was like 35 years old, practicing Aikido, and somehow he just like blew up in the movie industry. I don't know who he had to suck off to get like these massive roles out of nowhere in Hollywood, but I can tell you it was multiple guys coming from all angles, just fucking dicks, just <laughs> jizz flying everywhere. <laughs> he went from literally being nobody to one of the biggest action stars ever back in a time when action stars didn't have to like take and lie about steroid use you know what i mean just a lanky guy in his first movie with a receding hairline it was fucking beautiful gave men everywhere hope you know what i'm saying i don't know what happened now his hairline is so fucking jacked up dude his hairline is wild it's like it's like this spot where carpet meets linoleum you know what I mean? I don't even know how you get this hair. Just give me the fucking Dracula, dude. Just go ahead and Dracula my shit up. Somehow as this man ages, he gets more and more bloated and old, but his hairline has been going in reverse. They're on like opposite timelines. <laughs> so yeah, he went from that <laughs> to this fucking guy. This video here is Steven Seagal showing how to fight off multiple opponents. And he's doing a demonstration in front of actual martial artists, which, I mean, just makes it all the funnier to just do bullshit fake martial arts right in front of real martial artists. And they're forced to be like, oh, haha, yeah, no, it's really, it's really good. Never looks like he's interested in whatever he's doing. No matter where he is, he's fucking bored. He's walking with like the same energy of like your dad in slippers on his way to like the garage. He doesn't, 
He doesn't even look like he wants to fucking be there, dude. Honestly, the only feat of athleticism going on here are the guys who are faking being beat up. I mean, the guys that he's throwing around are essentially doing interpretive dance. If you set this to the right music, honestly, it might be beautiful. Where did he put the guy's hand? I'm confused. <laughs> Where did this guy's hand go on? <laughs> Grab him by his finger, twist him, fucking flip him onto the ground, step on the other hand, and then with the hand that you're still holding, you fucking just sort of grip it with your butt cheeks. Lock his fingers up with your with your b-hole. From the ancient martial arts of buttholio, or bum fu, aikid hole. <laughs> That's a fucking stretch, isn't it? I mean, living as Steven Seagal must be fucking insane. Just living the later half of your adult life, having convinced the world that you know karate and becoming a massive celebrity. Living like a six-year-old boy in a man's body. After karate class, I'm going to have chicken nuggies. <laughs> and you yourself, about 6'5", larger individual. How did it come to be Aikido that was your chosen art? Well, actually, I started studying karate at a very young age. I love it when a white guy just pronounces words like that. Karate. Uh, yeah, I practice karate. Gung fu. <laughs> what a douche. I get that that's probably how those words are actually pronounced, but you really can't say them that way without sounding like just the biggest asshole. It's like if you went to a restaurant and you asked for a croissant instead of a croissant. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you're right, but are you? Are you really? One of the cooks there was a guy called Sakamoto Sensei, and he was a Shotokan guy and an Okinawan Shorin uh, guy. <laughs> guy. <laughs> and he saw that when I was washing the dishes and moving around that, that I moved very fast and loved the martial arts. Holy shit, look at this guy wash dishes. I bet he kicks ass. <laughs> Whoa, this guy needs some martial arts training. Look at him wash dishes. Just fucking punching dishes. Kia! Wow, wow. Just like fucking got like a bowl and a headlock. Kia! A si uh, just a soapy sink full of dishes. He's just doing fucking front kicks and fucking elbow drops just into the shit. <laughs> One of the other guys in the kitchen, I don't even know what he was, he was a Mexican guy who claimed to be a boxer and, you know, he was one of these kind of controversial guys that loved to talk about how great boxing was and how great he was. What the fuck, dude? What is this story? Where are you going with this? <laughs> also, you are one of those guys. You won't ever hear Steven Seagal talk without mentioning how amazing he himself is. I'm surprised, honestly, I'm surprised Steven Seagal is willing to take his own dick out of his mouth for long enough to actually sit down for an interview. Every interview is just a constant self-sucking session of just, yeah, I'm pretty fucking dope and cool, and I'm a sex symbol. I just want to be known for being a great actor. Ah. He really said that, by the way. Never really studied with them much, became very good friends. And, um... Mid-sentence, he did what I can only really assume was him throwing up in his mouth and then swallowing it? Oh my god. This is a moment where he's talking about Brandon Lee and his unfortunate passing on the set of The Crow. 
When Brandon was killed like that, um, they called me a few minutes after it happened. It was in Carolina somewhere. They called me in the middle of the night and they said, we think that he's dead, and, but the guy shot a blank gun at him. Uh, how could he be dead? He's dying. He, he's, you know, severely hurt, maybe dead. And I said, you will find a projectile in him. You'll find a bullet in him. And they said, that can't be. You're crazy. And I said, you will find a bullet in him. And they called me in the morning. They said, you're amazing. And I said, why? And they said, there was a bullet in him. Mm -hmm. And, um... <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Let's really break that down for a second, right? So Brandon Lee filming a scene where he has a gun pointed at him. The gun fires. Brandon Lee dies. And the people on set went, holy shit. We got to call Steven Seagal about this. He would know what to do. We gotta call CSI expert Steven Seagal. And they explain what happened. Steven Seagal says, oh, he got shot. <laughs> Which is the most obvious part of the whole story. And then supposedly these guys on the phone went, come on. You think that he got shot? What, with a gun pointed at him? Later, they called him back and went, what, what are you, some sort of magician? Can you remote view? Because you nailed it. <laughs> it's just so fucking stupid. Way to really place yourself as an important factor of a story that has nothing to do with you. Do you think they would, I don't know, call 911? Brandon's family even, maybe? Before they would call Steven Seagal? You think he would be like pretty far down the list of people to call in that moment? If all your movies were lost forever in some freak fire and all the show reels were gone, but one survived for you to be able to show your grandkids one day, which one movie of yours would you hope survived? It'd probably be on deadly ground because of the speech in the end, mm -hmm. which, you know, is exactly what Al Gore did, you know, 18 years later, then he got an Academy Award and a Nobel Peace Prize yes. for. I was a little ahead of my time. The fucking guy, dude. He literally just indirectly said that he kind of should have gotten a Nobel Peace Prize. This fucking guy. Yeah, I mean, On Deadly Ground was basically the same as Al Gore's An Inconvenient Truth. But honestly, it was better. More action. More action in my movie, I think. Probably because of all the karate. <laughs> what a fucking wild dude. Who's the most legitimate Hollywood tough guy in your opinion if he was on the street and there was a situation you wanted this hollywood guy by your side because he could defend himself i hate that fucking smile he gives it's that hard to think of a legit one can you think of one michael jai white can i laugh in your face really yes can I laugh in your fucking dumb idiot face? <laughs> so, I mean, I don't really want to get into, on film anyway, mm -hmm. uh, you know, who's a tough guy. Do I think Michael is a tough guy? No. Do I think he's a martial artist? No. Do I think Jean-Claude's a tough guy or a martial artist? No. Oh, there you have it, dude. Hell yeah. Just go ahead and shit on all of the, all of your peers, basically. Damn, he loves to fucking burn some bridges, doesn't he? I mean, Michael J. White would make Steven Seagal shit his pants. Which, honestly, underrated defense move. Nobody really wants to fuck with you when your pants are just absolutely loaded to the brim with, uh, Dookie. How fast are you still at 60 years old? And when you're sparring guys like Leoto and Anderson, how fast are you still? You should ask them that. I don't want to answer that. Do you believe you're still as fast as you were even 10 years ago? Maybe faster. Really? You think you're faster now? Really? You really think you're a fa you're faster now than you were 20 years ago? Maybe faster. Did you see that? Did you see that? No. Can't, because it's you have the fucking um, too fast for the naked eye. Is it true that also you have a grandmother in your lineage that is Mongolian? Is that true? Well, no, no it's really probably on my, my father's side okay. because... Uh, all I have is a picture of uh, my father's uh, family, and they got pretty slanted eyes and Asian clothes. So <laughs> they look like Russian Mongols, but I don't know what they are, but they're something Asian. Hey, man. Ex fucking excuse me? Got pretty slanted eyes. <laughs> 
it's a rough sentence, you know? There's probably a better way to have said that they looked Asian. Also, so hyper-specific. Russian Mongol? God, Steven Seagal wants to be Russian and Asian so bad. It's insane. <laughs> they look like Russian Mongols, but I don't know what they are, but they're something Asian. Oh, also, quick side note, he got married in Japan, had multiple kids with that wife, moved back to the States, married another woman with overlapping marriages, then both of those marriages separated, and then he was married twice more. He's also got multiple accusations of sexual harassment and or rape, which get just absolutely dark as hell. If you're sitting there wondering why I'm shitting so hard on this guy, just know. Just know. He's a giant tool. So since his time spent as a action star, Steven Seagal has actually had like a, a reality show where he's basically playing cops and robbers, but with real cops. He's sort of just tagging along, doing sort of a dog the bounty hunter style thing where he's just sort of in the way. When I search, I'm always searching in places where narcotics could be They're kind of hidden in plain sight. You looking to mitch yet? Well, these boys not playing, huh? And that's a lot of crack cocaine, boy. It's actually resulted in him driving a tank through a guy's house on reports that there was cockfights happening there, murdering chickens, and even allegedly killing an 11-month-old puppy. So that's the kind of thing you get into as Steven Seagal. Thanks for hanging out with me. Make sure you hit like, hit subscribe. Hey guys, it's uh, Pale Alien from the future. I'm just editing this video. It's come to my attention that Steven Seagal makes music. So, you know, I figured maybe I would just check it out real quick. There's no way it's as bad as our boy Corey Feldman, right? I survived that. I should be able to survive this, no doubt. Oh God, it's so bad. Hard to, hard to breathe. Why? Tell me what you really want all night. Me want the banana, see for me, me name. Me want the body, him want the banana. When the girls start to strut, you could look at them, but you shouldn't do that. The girl dress is just a pity, not just there to cover her kitty. That's a lot of crack cocaine, boy.